sometimes in order to run a race, you have to shed some stuff off. Have you ever watched marathon runners? They, they don't show up in a parker. They show all, almost naked because they have a race to run. And I don't know who I'm talking to today. You, you might have showed up here wearing depression. You might have showed up in here with your emotions and turmoil. But we serve a God that's a deliverer. We serve a God that's, get this, able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above more than you can ask or think according to his power that is at work within us right now. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to move forward. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you can open your Bibles with me to Acts chapter number 3, we continue in our fire and rain series. I'll begin reading at verse number one. For the sake of time, I might jump around a little bit if that's okay. Here begins the reading of God's word. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg of those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention expecting to get something from them. Then Peter says, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. And he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and that they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Let's jump down to verse number 16. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Verse 16 for emphasis, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we need you today, Lord. We realize you alone are the source of our strength. It's preaching time, Father. Don't allow my sin to get in the way of you saving. Don't let people hear from Chris today, but let them hear directly from Christ. Though I am weak, you are strong. I need you right now, Lord, to hide me behind that old rugged cross, that you alone would be glorified. Lord, we pray for souls today. We pray that you transform us today, and we'll 
will be more and more like you. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The story is told this morning of the Bohemian reformer John Huss. For those of you that are history church majors, he was a precursor to the Protestant movement. And Pastor Caesar, one of his core beliefs or value was that Scripture was in fact the supreme authority in all matters. Because of his stance with the book, uh, he began to have issues uh, with the Catholic Church. And in 1411, they excommunicated him, condemned by the Council of Constance. On his 42nd birthday, as he refused a final plea to renounce his faith, it is recorded that these were his last words before being, get this, burned at the stake. Brother John said this, he said, what I taught with my lips, I seal with my blood. To deliver his message led this man to personal misery and even death. But he was so committed to the cross. He was so committed to the mission of Christ. He was willing to die for his belief. And I want to talk uh, this Sunday as we continue in the series from the subject, Delivering His Message. What I discovered, Brother Malcolm, is this. To deliver his message is not always popular. Let me say that again. To deliver his message is not always popular. Come here, Paul. You were beaten, bruised, and shipwrecked because of the gospel. Look at your Old Testament prophet. They went through tremendous turmoil based upon their commitment to the message of Jesus. And if it wasn't church people hated Jesus. The Sadducees and the Pharisees didn't like the message of Jesus. His message was not popular. I read this interesting quote this week by Howard Cosell, which I think is true, and he said this. He said, what's right isn't always popular, and what's popular isn't always right. Oh, that preaches. And since I'm holding the pot of gumbo this morning preaching, you need to know that there's some things in your life that might not always be popular, but in order to be a part of his fellowship, there's some things you might have to cut out. Amen, lights. I know it's tax season, but if you cheat on your taxes, I know it ain't popular, but it ain't right. I love watching Scandal, but I don't want my daughters to grow up to be Olivia Pope because adultery is still wrong. I like this show. But what's popular is not always right. Not only is the message not popular, but get this. Sometimes to deliver his message can bring you personal problems. Oh, y'all acting holy in here today. Let me say that again. Sometimes delivering his message can bring you personal problems. Come here, Daniel. You were being a good steward and praying, but because you wouldn't bow, you found yourself in a lion's den. Come here, Job. You were picked because you were living right, not wrong. Could it be that you have just got on Satan's most wanted list because you have decided to take a stand? 
It might not be popular. It might cause you personal problems, but get this. His message should be the child of God's top, top priority. I got Bible for that statement. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all those things shall be added unto you. So to deliver his message might put you in some precarious situation. You might lose some friends on your job. You, you might lose some relationships. Get this. You might even lose some friends in the church. If you deliver his message, so in this text this morning, you don't get too far in the text without seeing this dedication to his message. Verse 1 says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. They go into the temple for the time of prayer. What are you getting at, preacher? Maybe you should show up at church. Because if the apostles went to church, don't you think you need to go too? They, they were committed to going to the temple for prayer. Get this. Uh, Jews had uh, three periods of the day where they prayed. They, they would pray at nine, they would pray at noon, and they would pray at three. They, they prayed together. And I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but you need to realize if you're going to deliver his message, you need to talk to the messenger. I'm sorry, the person that gives the message is not my message to give. I got to get my message from Christ. So every Sunday I say the same thing. Don't let people hear from Chris. Let them hear from Christ because I will jack you up. So they were devoted to prayer. They were devoted to coming together for the good of the gospel. But even though they were devoted, you don't have to read too far to see that there's a dilemma in this text. And the dilemma is there's a man who has been crippled since birth. And the good thing I like about this passage is that you don't know his name, but you know his issue. And I've discovered in this Christian walk is that Sometimes you can be labeled by your issue. And I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but there are some people in here that have been labeled with issues. This man is crippled. He, he doesn't have mobility. And if we can be real in here today, if you can be honest, have you ever felt crippled? Has life ever hit you so hard that you were stuck, that, that you could not? I know we song moving forward, but there are times in my life where I felt I can't move. The divorce hurt so bad you couldn't move. Losing the job hurt so bad you couldn't move. Your child did the wrong thing and you couldn't move. This man not only has a physical problem, but he has a financial problem he also. What do you do when you can't throw money at your problem? What do you do when you can't pay off and fix your issue? He, he has no finances. He's left there to beg. But it gets worse because it's a spiritual problem because in that culture, he couldn't go into the temple. Because if you're crippled, you're unclean. And I believe that that sometimes happens in the church today. We, we don't really want to help people. We, we don't really sometimes want to address people when they don't come in as cookie-cutter Christians. We don't really want to deal with people that are struggling in their sexuality. We don't really want to deal with people that don't have the right bank account. We don't really want to deal with people that don't have the same race as us. We don't really want to deal with people when they don't think exactly the way we think. So we keep them outside of the church. I thought the gospel was for everybody, Pastor Dan. But what I discovered since I've been a part of church is that sometimes we really don't want to help everybody. We really sometimes want to keep people on the outside. So, so is the good news selective? 
is the good news for everybody or is the good news only for my four and no more? So he's dealing with this dilemma. As you read a little bit further in the text, they begin to offer him deliverance. He's asking for a temporary fix. And I believe that sometimes, even in church, we just want a temporary fix. We just want an emotional high, then we can get right back to the mess we did before we got here. Is there anyone here that can testify that sometimes you didn't came to church and you prayed your way through it, but by the time you got back home, you had said, I'm never going to do that no more. You had made that commitment to God, but by the time you got to your front door, evil was right there waiting on you. So this man, he, we don't know his name but we see his issue. And I, I don't know about you, but, but I, I can identify with this man because life sometimes will hit you so hard that you're stuck on the outside. Life can hit you so hard that you're reaching for everything, but you can't get to Jesus. There are barriers set for this man so that he cannot get to the gospel. So the challenging question is asked, what, what's keeping you away? From this text, I see several things we need to do of the benefits of delivering his message. And the first thing is this. His message produces results. Three people got it. His message produces results. Yep, y'all didn't close your Bible yet. Good. Verse 5. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Walk, taking him by the right hand. He helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Church people don't know when to get excited. This man has been towed up from the flow up all his life. But all Peter and John had to do was to speak the right message. All they had to do was speak in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. And I don't know who showed up today. You need to know that Jesus still has power. Jesus still works miracles. Jesus can get you back up on your feet. Give God some praise. I was thinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the water lifted me. Now safe am I. What lifted me? His love. His love. He has the power to help you deal with whatever the circumstance that has caused you to fall. His power. His message can resurrect any dead situation. I, I don't care what your report card say. I don't care what your neighbor say. I don't even care what your mama said about you. God is able to resurrect dead things. And if you be real in here today, you can testify that he's got you back up on your feet. How do I know? You walked in here today. His message produces results. His message should persuade you to rejoice. Here it is. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts. Here it is. Walking and jumping and praising God. This man couldn't walk at all, 
But suddenly he meets Jesus and he's back on his feet. And I don't know about you, but that should prompt you to praise God. That should prompt somebody in here to praise God. When you think about how you was laid out in sin, when you think about where God has brought you from, that's a reason to rejoice. That's a reason to jump. That's a reason to not act so dignified when you think about what he's brought you from. Is there anyone in here today that can have a throwback Sunday morning when you begin to have a flashback of where God pulled you from? He pulled you from the bar. He pulled you from adultery. He pulled you from all this sin, and you want to come in and act all such a much. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Rejoice. Give him praise for what he has done in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What are you so excited about? I know what he's done for me. I know the thoughts that go on in my head. Thank you, Lord. I could have been cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs when I was drinking and driving and the car didn't crash. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I, I got happy in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You saved a wretch like me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 You got a reason to rejoice. You were on your way to hell with gasoline underwear on. But he saved you. Thank you, Lord. For all the perfect people you can leave out now, but for those of us that know that we were tore up from the floor, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How many more points I got? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. When you think about where God has brought you from, he's worthy to be praised. You can sit in here and act like the frozen chosen if you want. He's worthy to be praised. <laughs> Let me get deep in spiritual mind. My theology is because of my psychology. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my, my hands go up to lift him up because he's worthy to be praised. This man couldn't walk. He was a cripple. He was identified by his issue. But God fixed it. Is there anyone here that can testify that he's fixed it? He's still fixing it. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. When God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Hallelujah. That wasn't in the notes today, but hallelujah, Lord. You should rejoice because of what God has done for you. But not only should you rejoice, when you deliver his message, there should be some repentance in there. Who just want to get quiet? Verse 17, now brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he has foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. 
He loved you so much not to leave you where you're at. So once you get through rejoicing, you also need to repent. Because rejoicing without repentance is just some emotionalism. You should repent because, get this, my Bible says all. Not y'all, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that means that when I repent, there are some things... I shouldn't do no more. I've made mistakes, but if I'm truly repenting, I'm going to turn from my wicked ways, but not do a 360 going back to what he just pulled me out of. You need to repent. The last thing I want to share with you, that we deliver his message. He's able to restore. Oh, that's good news. He's able to restore. I, I, I don't care how bad you messed up. I don't care how dirty the deed was. He's able to restore you. Verse 22, for Moses said, Lord, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from among his people. Indeed, all the prophets from Samuel on, as many as have spoken, have foretold these days and you here it is you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers he said to Abraham through your offspring all people on earth will be blessed when God raised up his servant he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways He's a restorer. Yes, he this was not only to the house of Israel, it's open to you and me. Still ain't feeling it yet. Um, went to Roseland Christian Grammar School. And my favorite teacher uh, was, was Miss Lubin. Uh, she was my second grade teacher. And I noticed that back in the 80s that we didn't have those smart boards. Well, what we had was a, a big black chalkboard. Chalkboard. We got the 40 and over cloud staying later. So I'm talking to you now. Wasn't no smart board, it was a blackboard. So during the day, when she put all her stuff up there, it would get messy. And she would take uh, the eraser and even though she would erase it, it would still have some marks on it. That's right. mm -hmm. but, but next to her chalkboard pass there, she had a bucket of clean water. She would reach in the bucket and she would take the sponge out and she would begin to wash the excess mess off. And I believe that that's the same thing Jesus Christ does for us. Because I don't know about you, but you have some stuff still on your chalkboard. And the songwriter put it like this, what can wash away all my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. There's no other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. He can restore you. That's the gospel. That no matter how rough it gets, he's able. If I turn my life back to him, he can restore you. So our praise teams come. Our prayer team takes their place. There's some people here.
that you know God has is requiring more of you. Because to deliver his message is not just for the preachers. You know, that great uh, commission, that, that's for all of us that go ye. We found out about our missionaries today. That, that's, that's for each and every one of us. So will you give yourself away to Gabe so he can use you? So the altar is open because it's one thing his message should do it should lead you to repentance. Give God praise as they come. Amen. Amen. Amen.